Hello, my name is Mr. Rickman, and welcome to another tutorial video. This time I want to talk about setting up your Google Classroom for the beginning of the school year. Especially since this year, many classes are going to be switching to remote only, at least at the beginning of the school year, it can be really difficult to figure out how exactly you want to organize your Google Classroom. Personally, I like to think that you really need to pro have your Google Classroom set up and organized before your students even arrive into the Google Classroom. This way they can be able, they can come in and they can see everything and it gives you a chance to be able to tell students where to find different pieces of information. So let's just start as if we're creating our a classroom from scratch, right? So the first thing we do is we go up to this plus sign and we click create class. So then I'm just going to work on creating this. So English three, right? That's what I'm teaching. I'm just going to say language arts, right? Room. Well, I'm right now it's from my office. So room one. <laughs> uh, and you can change that however you would like. Okay. And you can even change the sections if you have different sections of the same course. And I want to click create. So it's going to give take it a moment, work on creating this classroom. Do, 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 do. Sometimes it can take a while. There we go. So now we have our classroom, right? This is fresh, nothing's been edited about it. So what's the first thing you want to do? Well, for me personally, I like to kind of add a little bit of a unique or personal touch to my classroom. And it starts with this little part here, the theme. Um, initially, you can select any theme you want, right? There's a whole host of pre-generated uh, options that Google gives you. Uh, so depending on your subject area, you can, of course, just pick one of these. They're pretty sleek. They're pretty, you know, they're not, there's not like clutter or anything. They look really nice. Um, so you're welcome to do that. Me, personally, I like to upload a photo. So I'm going to select a photo from my computer, and I have a photo already in mind, Book of Life, right? So I have a bunch of background images saved from my computer, and I'll use them sometimes for here. So I have this image of a book, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of increase it a little bit, kind of get the book a little bit more in there, get a little bit there. And it's just a way of making the classroom look a little bit more unique, right? So instead of kind of pre-generated thing, hey, here's this fun image, kind of sets the tone a little bit. Um, you know, like this one's obviously kind of more uh, fantastical, right? I've had ones where it's been a dinosaur, kind of goofy. It kind of depends on your classroom and the tone you're trying to set for that year. Right. The other thing you can do as well is you can gen you can click this to generate a Meet link. Um, so Google Meet is fully integrated now with Google Classroom. And so when you generate a Meet link, then the link there will show up on the header here. What that does is it allows you, if you're going to be hosting office hours or if you have some sort of synchronous learning um, that needs to go on with students, they can then just go up and click that. Google Meet link, they don't have to worry about finding a link in their email. You don't really have to necessarily post it. It's just going to be something where it's like, hey, this is the information you need. So, okay, that's really all you can do from here, right? You can create some announcements and stuff, and you can have an initial announcement. It's like, hey, welcome to my class. Uh, but really, I kind of try to hold off doing that until really I've started getting students in. But what I want to do from before students are even in the classroom is I want to go to this tab, the classwork tab. So this is where students are probably going to actually spend most of their time because this is where the work will actually appear. So I want to start and create some sections so that all of these assignments, everything I do throughout the year is a little bit more well organized. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to create and then I'm going to go down and I'm going to use topic. And so my first topic, I'm just going to make it unit one and add, right? So this way, any any of the assignments or documents related to the first unit of my class, they can show up right in there and students will know where those that information is. But I also want to have some topics that are going to be the same throughout the entire school year. First, starting with notes. So this way, any notes that are just th th throughout the class, Google Slides, maybe it's videos, handouts, anything like that, I can post in there and those will always be there. That way students can always go back to them, always find them, and they know exactly where they'll be. Whereas I like to use the unit one or unit two tabs as a way of posting the assignments for that unit. 
That way, as the year goes on and that unit kind of falls further down the page, students don't have to don't feel like they need to go hunting because all their notes are in one place. But the assignments they've already completed, those are done. Those are just down there. If they want to find them and look at them, they can. But otherwise, they don't really need to. The next tab I'm going to actually work on, the next topic rather, I'm going to work on creating here is actually going to be additional learning. So this is going to be assignments or articles or just some information where students can find something new to learn, right? Because you're always going to have students, those GT kids or those kids who um, speed through the work really quickly, who are going to want, actually want more to learn, more to look at, more to do. And so this is sort of a tab where it's not mandatory. These assignments aren't things that I'm necessarily going to be grading, you know, but it's things that they can find and use and look at that will be better for them. That kind of give them something to work on, something to do. And notice I don't call it like extra work or extra you know, assignments. And the reason is one, because not everything that's in here is necessarily going to be assignments. And second of all, I don't want the students to feel like it's just like busy work. It's not like, oh, well, hey, you're done. Now go here. You have something extra to work on. That way the kids, students don't feel like they're being punished or penalized for actually working ahead. This way it's just kind of something extra. And a lot of times I try to put some fun things in there, um, something, you know, goofy or just interesting that personally interests me. Um, I know last year we were, my, me and my students talked a lot about AI and computer AI. So from this tab, I put some, I would find some videos that were talking about that and news articles and put that in there. Again, wasn't mandatory, students didn't have to do it, but it was there. The last one I'm going to create is actually something that's a little more specific to an English classroom, right? And depending on if you are math or science, you may not necessarily feel a need for this. And that is journal entries. Now, journal entries for me, with the curriculum we have, it, it, these journal entries are going to actually be graded, right? But I don't want them set between the units because one, I'm not necessarily going to be having them be specific to units all the time. And second of all, I want it to be a little bit more of its own space, right? Some of these journal entries are going to be written. Some of them are going to be spoken through like Flipgrid or recorded. And so I want them to be their own spot. So now I have the four basic tabs. These are the four basic topics I want to be in here when my students actually enter the classroom, right? So they'll be able to see this and see things that get populated in here. But I want to maybe reorganize this a little bit, right? Maybe I want notes to be at the top. So what I do is I just click here and then I just drag it up here. And now notes will permanently be at the top. So my students will know, hey, anytime I need to find the notes, whether it's something I missed, maybe it's a recording of a synchronous uh, lesson that I did through Google Meet, that will be right there in the notes topic. So that way they can always find it. It's very easy for them. It just kind of helps to organize the information and make it a little better for them overall. Okay, to kind of show you an example of what this might look like, I'm gonna to go to my fake class here, right? And again, as you notice, see how there's all this stuff, especially as the year school year goes on, this may get really cluttered and really difficult to follow along with. And so when you go up here, now this looks a lot easier to look at because now my unit one is at the very bottom, right? Students aren't gonna to have to mess with that. Unit two is a little bit higher. Okay, that's the latest unit. Now the students know that's what they should be working in. And notice here I have my notes, my journal entries, and my additional learning already there. And they are all stay in these exact spots throughout the entire school year. Now, one thing of note, these are already populated. So when a student comes in, they will actually see these topics. When I go into here, my English 3 class, these are all empty. So right now the students don't see this at all. Right? They won't see anything in here. But when they go in here, they'd actually see these topics because there's already assignments, already material in those sections. So especially if you do organize things, make sure you actually have something maybe ready to go in that particular topic because otherwise students won't see it initially. But as you can see, things are already populated in here. So students will be able to see everything. I already got some notes in here. And notice this one specifically, using the Google Classroom. That's actually the first thing I want to do after I've finished making all of this, is I want to help make a tutorial for my students so they know how to use the Google Classroom, kind of as a way to show them how to navigate everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my stream here. 
and then I'm going to go up. And I, what I use to make my little tutorial videos is I actually use Flipgrid Shorts, right? These are very short little videos you can create. I've actually made a tutorial about them previously. Um, they're less than 10 minutes long, and it allows you to share your screen to show the students exactly what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go and record a short here. Right. And initially it'll show up my face, right? That's not going to be very useful for when the students are trying to actually look at Google Classroom though, right? So I'm going to go down here to these three dots. I'm going to click screen recording and I'm going to start, right? I'm going to select my entire screen, start sharing, right? And then I'm going to go over here to my Google Classroom. And at this point, then I can start and say, hi, welcome to my Google Classroom. Here you will find the stream. This is where you'll find everything you need for class, right? This is where everything will get posted. But hey, here you can find the meet, the Google Meet link. You can find the class code for this for the Google Classroom. It is right here. It is da 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 da, right? You can move over and say this is the classwork tab. This is where you'll be doing most of your work, right? As you can see, everything is organized into nice sections. This is my notes section. Any notes you have for this class will appear under this topic. These are where you'll find journal entries. You need to complete a journal entry each week, and so on and so forth, right? Once I'm finished, I click stop recording, pause. I can go in, I can click on it. I can cut out the parts where I was, you know, not actually talking about the Google Classroom, maybe I was getting things set up, you know, getting things finished. I can click confirm, right? And then that'd be it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one. I'm not actually using it. But then once you're all done, what you can do is I'm gonna click on this, okay? And once you're all done, you just can copy this link, go into your Google Classroom, and then like I did here, you can just create material and then add a link. And then I would just paste that link. And now that short is right there. That link can be shared in Google Classroom. So that way students can go back to it in case they get confused about where things might be. You can share that out via email. So if you have a parent or if you have a student who emails you and says, hey, Mr. Rickman, I can't get into the classroom. How do I do that? You know, or where do I find this information? You can actually share that link out so that then they are able to look at it, especially if the video does a good job of answering their question, right? So this is just how I work on organizing my classroom before the students are even in, right? So before my students are even in here, I don't even have anyone in my class yet, but now it's already nice and organized for me. So not only do I know where everything will be, but so will my students. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you want to watch more videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for your time. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there, and as always, don't get arrested.